Starting this stream now. Hopefully it's get connected. Okay. So first thing first. Uh, do you have any problem with the connection? Can you see my screen now? Anybody? Okay, that's great. Great. Thank you. Thank you for your feedbacks. Okay. So first of all, this is my homepage, sadevransekar.com. So you can just get in this web page and go to the courses. Under the courses, you can see the advanced artificial intelligence link. So this is the class for today. And if you click on this link, you can see the syllabus and some useful links, some textbooks, references. Uh, also, the PowerPoint slides I'm going to share for you. Uh, I'm going to... Um, uh, go over them for today so you can download the first part the introduction and the agents maybe we can cover the agents today and we are going to follow the textbook from peter norwink uh, so you can see the reference in here russell and norwink artificial intelligence a modern approach so i strongly suggest you to purchase this book and get it into your library and there are some links related to this uh, textbook so you can also get benefit from these links and download some useful python codes or some exercises and so on okay so uh, basically what we try to do is uh, in the last semester also we have did the same thing we have one final project not the exam so during this project you deliver a end-to-end uh, -end working code together with your project report and the presentation so maybe we can update this grading later on this semester, but initially we can say that you are going to have a final project for the whole semester and there will be some steps for the grading like the reports or the presentation or the working code and so on. So it will be most probably it's going to be an individual project because we have only a few people in here, maybe five to ten people. So it's a good idea to make an uh, individual final project. Also, there is a YouTube channel. I'm going to upload these videos. Actually, currently we are recording to the YouTube. It's an unlisted video, so nobody can see it. But later on, after I have completed this class, I will deliver these links to you. Maybe we can put them in here if there is no privacy issues, right? like the names or contact information of you, etc. So if there is no, no privacy issue, we can make them public. Otherwise, I will just deliver these links unlisted to you. Also, we have an assistant, Maltem. Uh, you can just ask anything to Maltem about the course about the technical part of this course so you can ask about the connection problems about these links about anything related to the technical part of this class okay so before we proceed do you have any questions about this syllabus can you access from your computers um, do you have any problems anything you want to ask about the uh, technical part of this course design and so on okay very good okay fine so uh, from the the web page you can also download these uh, slides but i'm going to cover the first slide set the uh, the introduction parts so one more time the course code is ece 550 artificial intelligence and we're meeting on the mondays afternoons at 1 pm uh, we have the textbook one more time if, for the applications you can use Lisp, Dr. Record or Python, they are all up to you. Okay, so you can pick one of these programming environments and then you can download this programming environment and you can find lots of information on the web. Uh, actually, because of the there is no assistant, the TA for this class, maybe we will have some uh, difficulties about the application of this class in the uh, programming environment. Uh, so if you have any difficulties like this, any problems like this, you can easily contact with me about any questions. But basically, the course content will cover the theoretical part only, okay? So I will cover the theoretical part and you are free to apply them on any programming language. About like Java, Perl, Python, uh, Lisp, any programming language is welcomed in this class. So you can pick one of them, your favorite programming language, and then try to implement all the things we have covered in the theoretical part of this class. Okay, for today, we will make a course overview, an introduction to the course. We will talk about what is artificial intelligence, okay? So what is artificial and what is intelligence? We will cover these terms before we start everything. 
We will talk about a brief history of this artificial intelligence and then state-of-art applications of AI in the current world. Okay. Again, uh, we have an outline like the agents first. So the first couple of chapters are covering the agents and we are going to cover what is an agent. Maybe if you already watched the movie Matrix, <laughs> you, already, you are already familiar with the agent Smith. So what is an agent? What is an artificial intelligence agent? We will cover these terms in the first couple of uh, first two chapters. And then we will cover the basic search algorithms. So if you have any problems in the data structures course, uh, like the search algorithms, like the linked lists or um, tree, tree implementation uh, or tree traverse algorithms or so on, uh, please just refresh your uh, previous information on the data structures. If you have any problems in the data structures, uh, it's, it's a good time to uh, recover them and handle these problems before we start these classes. Also, in the third part of this class, we will cover the logic. We will talk about what is logic, how can we implement logic on the artificial intelligence for solving the problems. We will cover the zero-order logic or the primitive logic or predicate logic. And then we will cover the first-order logic and the second-order logic, perhaps, if we have time like the temporal logic or some advanced logic uh, and then we will talk about how can we apply these logical background logical theories into the artificial intelligence so uh, solutions problems and the fourth part we have the planning uh, like the uh, constraint satisfaction problems like the timetabling or uh, scheduling or any other pro problems related to the ai also, uncertainty is a very trending topic for now. So you can think about uh, fuzzy logic or probability. So if there is something uncertain, which means there is a probability or which means there is a fuzzy, then we will talk about these things in the uncertainty part. We will talk about the machine learning. Also, it's one of the trending topics for, uh, for these days. So for example, you can think about the uh, data structures courses. If you already uh, register to data, 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 uh, data mining or data science courses, we will cover these topics in very detail. Or if you already uh, uh, get this course in the previous class, previous semester, perhaps you are already familiar with these two concepts. Uh, but we will make a short introduction for uh, the people new to these topics. Okay, so this is just an introduction part and we will cover it in, let's say, two or three weeks. And then you will get an idea about the machine learning and the data science applications from the perspective of AI. Don't forget data science is a subtopic, is a, a subfield, a discipline under the AI. So machine learning is one of the major study fields of artificial intelligence. So under the AI, we have lots of different study fields like the nat natural language processing, like the planning, like the search algorithms, logic and so on. And machine learning is just one of them. Uh, so if you have difficulty about these concepts, about these terms, uh, it's better to start putting these things onto the way. So, for example, the machine learning is a subfield under the AI. So this is one of the important things maybe we will uh, we we already covered for today. And on the on the last part, maybe we if we have time, we can cover the natural language processing and we can cover the unstructured data. So if you, if you are familiar with the database classes, in the database classes, we have the database management systems and these database management systems are covering the structured data. So we have a structure for keeping this data in the memory or in the disk and the secondary or primary memories, etc. But in here, in the AI, we are dealing with the unstructured data, which might be the text, the, uh, the, the voice or the uh, music or video or the images so all of these things are covered as the unstructured data so we will talk about how can we deal with these unstructured data from the text processing perspective and the natural language processing perspective so the text processing is applying the statistical ap approaches or the machine learning approaches for the text unstructured data natural language processing is following the linguistic approaches uh, to the uh, to the text but we will cover them later on in the uh, last part of this semester. 
Okay, so let's start uh, with the AI. But before we start, do you have any questions about the AI or the course outline or any cover, any, anything you want to cover uh, uh, in this class? For example, if you want me to cover any, any, any topic under the AI, you can just indicate it now and then we can add it to the course schedule perhaps. Are you curious about anything under the AI uh, that I haven't counted yet? Okay, so let's start with the famous question, what is AI, what is artificial intelligence? I think it is, it is enough, sir. The course contents are enough. Okay, thank you, yeah. thank you for your feedback. Okay. okay, thank you. It's good to hear from you, uh, you know, when lecturing, just talking and talking is not good for the uh, instructor, so sometimes please give me some feedbacks like this, so uh, thank you very much for your feedback. So just I'm skipping this course outline for now, but if you want to add something in the future, like if you are curious about something, let's say about image processing, maybe video processing, maybe streaming data analytics, maybe any other topic, you can just indicate it and then I can add it to, to the course outline if it is available for everybody. Anyways, so let's start with the question, what is AI, what is artificial intelligence? And any idea about what is artificial intelligence? Any of you want to declare or define the term artificial intelligence? Uh, yes, sir. Please, uh, please Artificial go ahead. intelligence is, according to my understanding, uh, is uh, to train the machine to think uh, like a human. The study of uh, the study and training of a machine to think like a human. So. Uh, According to my understanding, this is the definition of artificial intelligence. A very good definition. Thank you for this. Any, any other opinion, any other uh, definitions? Okay, so this is a good definition. Thinking like human. Okay, so uh, yes. The, actually, we have two, two subfields under the AI, and the one subfield we call it as the AGI, Artificial Generalized Intelligence. And in this subfield, Artificial Generalized Intelligence, we are dealing with the, uh, with the uh, softwares which can, AGI, Artificial Generalized Intelligence. Okay, so this field is just is studying just as you said okay artificial generalized intelligence a way of finding a software which can think or act like a human okay also we have artificial intelligence or artificial narrow intelligence which is studying to find rational solutions to rational problems Okay, so there are two subfields under the AI. We can just put them in this way. Okay, so in the artificial generalized intelligence, we are just following the path of human, being human. How can human think? How can human act? And then we are trying to put a generalized intelligence onto the application. And then if we have somehow find a way of putting a smarter, a more intelligent solution than human, then maybe we will solve all our problems without using anybody, okay? So this is one path in the a a artificial intelligence, AI. The other one is finding the rational solutions to the rational problems. Why do we put rational solutions? What do you understand with rational problems? What is a rational problem? What is an irrational problem? Okay, so rational problem might be going from one point to another point in the map. Okay, so let's say you are driving a car. So we replace the car driver with a software. And then this software is driving the car from one point to the destination to the another point, let's say. And this problem is a rational problem because you can just follow some procedures like increasing the speed of the car, stopping the car if there is some emergency, following the correct turns, uh, taking the correct turns, increasing the speed, optimizing the fuel consumption, and so on. Okay, so this is called as a rational problem. And then we can replace the driver with a rational agent, with a rational software, in order to solve this problem. Okay, so this type of problem is called as an ANI, 
the artificial narrow intelligence. On the artificial generalized intelligence, we try to solve these problems besides the irrational problems. For example, dancing or making music, okay, or any other irrational thing. So why do we call them as irrational? Because we cannot formalize them. We cannot write the mathematics of dancing, okay? We cannot put the uh, we cannot explain the optimization factors or the functions under the generalized problems under the uh, or maybe dreaming, okay? Maybe uh, beliefs, okay? So you can put anything related to the human in under the AGI and all these things are considered as a problem of AGI besides the rational problems, okay? So this is the first uh, difference we have in here. And actually what we try to do is we, under this course, under this class, we will follow the acting rationally, okay? So first, because this is the first class we have as a, an AI class, an artificial intelligence class, and in the first time, we cannot attack the generalized problems, we cannot attack the irrational problems. Instead, we start from the rational problems that we can define, we can formalize, we can write some formula, equations about them, and then after we have a solution for these rational problems, we will start to attack the generalized problems in the following classes perhaps. But for this class, we have our boundaries, we have our scope as acting rationally, okay? So what do we have in here? For example, thinking humanly is a cognitive model. Maybe if you are familiar with the cognitive psychology, cognitive linguistics, or this is something related with everything. For example, how do we formulate the language? It's a problem of the linguistics, right? We have lots of language or linguistics or grammar rules, but we always have some, uh, you know, exceptions. Okay, some irregular, some exceptional cases for these rules. So we cannot fully formulate the language. We cannot write the formula of the language. Even if we have these rules, even if we have these grammar rules, there are some still exceptions that human can use. And actually what happens is a human can create a new rule which has never been written. Okay, So thinking humanly covers all these things, for example, under the language. Because, you know, language is a cognitive uh, process or for example we have the psychology cognitive psychology a very famous a very trending study topic for now so how a human psychology is behaved or built or constructed during the whole lifetime okay starting from the childhood and then uh, until uh, until we have a character built without a stable character or an unstable character okay so these things are considered under the cognitive psychology the problems under the cognitive psychology and thinking humanly is an action to understand how human thinks uh, thinking rationally is something we can formulate okay so for example you can think about the logic in here we have the rules of logic maybe you are already familiar with like the conjunctions and or uh, therefore, there are some conjunctions like this. We have some rules. For example, you can think about the Boolean logic, the true and falses. So we can just write some rules. Just write some rules like true and true is always true, and so on. Okay. So this this is something we can formulate and we can solve. So thinking rationally is a thinking action, and it's happening in the rational playground. Acting humanly. So how can we understand if a software is acting humanly? We will talk about the Turing test later on today, but acting humanly is something that we can just monitor the actions. We can just view the actions, screen these actions, and then we can just judge this is a human. Okay. So the problem about acting humanly is the judge is a human. The decision of acting humanly is made by human. Okay, we don't have an objective judge in here. We don't have an objective, an observer in here. So everything considered as acting humanly is a is an is a uh, perception of is an understanding of human at the end. Acting rationally is also something we can study. 
because after all we can monitor we can screen these actions and then we can put them into an objective function like for example for a taxi cab driver uh, for a, a taxi driver let's say uh, optimizing the fuel consumption or getting the highest profit maximizing the profit might be an objective function and at the end of the day we can just measure these things and then we can say that okay we ha uh, we have a, a process in here we are just making some uh, good uh, process in here and then we can say that we can optimize these functions and so on okay so again one more time we are going after the acting rationally thinking rationally under this class also for the ai there are some uh, definitions in here but my favorite definition is building a two source of information two source of uh, uh, two source of uh what we know knowledge okay so let me find in here two sources of information okay so everything we know is coming from two sources one of them is nature and the other one is the human itself okay so let's say these are something inside of us so these are something outside of us, outside, outside of us, okay? So what do we mean by outside of us? For example, we can just monitor the nature and learn from the nature, okay? So you can think about, for example, the gravity, okay? Without a human being, we still have the gravity under the physics and we can say that human has no action no intervention in the gravity gravity is already in the or, or for example we can think about a, a distance away a far far away galaxy there are still the physical rules like the gravity is working over there okay uh, but what do we have inside of us for example economics we have invited the money or the numbers we have invited the numbers without human there is nothing called as numbers okay so numbers are the invention of human being or we can talk, think about the geometry like a point okay so point is something dimensionless from the elementary classes perhaps you are aware of these geometric objects and a point is something dimensionless and you can never see something like this in the real life but we can imagine it we can build something over it okay so for example numbers mathematics okay all these things are coming from the inside of the human okay so there are two sources of these information of what we know okay or the science if you are talking about science we can say that okay uh, in the nature we have physics physics chemistry or biology or so on thermodynamics perhaps also statistics is in here you know statistics uh, is under uh, under the nature because statistics requires some uncertainty and if we define everything there is no uncertainty for the uncertainty we need the nature okay so for for example rolling dice requires some natural effect on it but for for example uh, for uh, random number generation under the computers there is no real random number you know because everything can be predicted under the computer so every random number we generate under the computers are called called considered as pseudo random okay pseudo random not a real random number okay because it's on it is something generated by something we already know we already invented okay so for example under the science we can put um, philosophy in here or let's say logic under here reasoning or mathematics or uh, computer science okay for example engineering is under the nature okay so for example computer engineering or electronic electrical engineering are under this nature field 
So computer science is completely different than the engineering. Okay, so uh, from the human sources, for example, you can just take a photo and then delete it. You can create something, okay, and then delete something in the digital world, okay. But in the real life, you cannot create something and you cannot <laughs> delete something, okay. <laughs> from the thermodynamics, perhaps you can remember, you can never uh, delete something from the nature. You can just transform it to energy, to something else, but you cannot uh, just create something or you cannot just destroy something, okay? Or uh, from the, for example, uh, digital world, we can also create the copies of something, okay? Like, for example, we can say that 6 is equal to 6, right? This is a mathematical equation and everybody can say that, okay, this is true. But in the real life, there is no two things equal to each other. No equality. Okay? So you see, nature has its rule, roles, its rules, and its behaviors. Okay? So in the nature, there is a mechanics already working, and we are just making a discovery in here. Okay? So we are just trying to discover the rules of nature, and then maybe we are just formulating them using the mathematics. Okay? So we just get, the discovery means that we just get something from nature to the inside of us. Okay, so discovery means from the nature to the human. And in artificial means that, okay, let me put these things as an operator in here. Okay, and artificial means that from inside to the nature. Okay, so in the artificial, what we try to do is we have some mechanics inside of us and we are applying them to the nature. If, for example, you have, let's say, a mathematical equation or a geometrical, let's say you can draw a line, draw a line in geometry, and then if you try to apply this to the nature, okay, uh, so maybe, let's say, you are just trying to design a port or a building, let's say, okay, so building design, let's say architecture or design, design a building. And then you can have some straight lines in this design, right? Because straight line is something we, we like. We have in our behavior, in our uh, thinkings, in our mind. And then if we try to apply these straight lines into the nature, then we are making something artificial, okay? We are touching to the nature with an information from our inside, which means we are doing something artificial, okay? So the definition of artificial is this, okay? So artificial means that changing the nature, applying to the nature, acting on the nature with using some information from inside of us. And discovery is something we understand from the nature and then we model, we write the terminology with using the knowledge inside of us. So these are two, uh, two terms uh, with opposite meanings, maybe from this perspective. What is intelligence is something we have in here, inside of us. Okay? So everything we know, everything we understand is called as intelligence. And of course, uh, intelligence is something uh, we build on top of the information, okay? So first we discover something from the nature and then we have this in the data, in the digital world and then we convert it to the intelligence, okay? And I have a very famous, I like this shape actually, the, uh, I'm not sure if I will be able to find it but let me just try my chance in here. Yeah, there's a pyramid in here. Maybe you are already familiar with the data information, knowledge and wisdom pyramid. So let's go over it one more time. So on the bottom level, we have the discovery, oops, discovery, measurement, and so on, okay? After this, we have the data. On top of it, we have the information. Okay, and on top of it, oops, let me put information in here, it will be much more easier, information, 
knowledge and wisdom okay so this pyramid indicates that on the bottom line we have the discoveries the measurements okay so we discover something oops, we discover something from the real life or from inside of us and then we convert it to the data and on the data level we have the database management systems to keep this data together with an integrity and if we have meaning of this data then we have the information for example let's say 500 is a data but 500 is a salary is an information because 500 has a meaning now if you say 500 is a salary of some person then it has an information and in the knowledge level maybe you are making an expectation a guess about the salary of somebody from its cv so in this case we have a debate in the knowledge level we are not certain about anything maybe we are just discussing about what might be the uh, salary of this person depending on the uh, cv of this person okay so in the wisdom level maybe we are talking about founding the economics okay so as a human we just invented the money we just invented the economy and its rules so maybe we are talking about an artificial intelligence which can make these things which can put the rules of economy which can put an, a, a concept a phenomenon like economy so this is in the wisdom level so in the in the discovery and the measurements we had different tools like for example you have your <laughs> your uh, smartphone with a camera and then you have just a photo of something okay so this photo is stored in, as a data and then if you have information about this photo like it's a photo of somebody or something then you have the information okay and then if you are processing this photo about the age of this person making a prediction about the age of this person or let's say the nationality or the gender of this person or the psychometrics like angry or happy or something like this then we are talking about the knowledge level okay so th these these things are called uh, as the data information knowledge wisdom pyramid and starting from the data actually but in order to understand what is data we need to put an extra level in here as the discovery and the measurements okay so basically one more time we have two sources of information or the science everything under the science like economics physics uh, philosophy whatever disciplines you call can be rooted into one of these things nature or human okay and depending on the perspective in here maybe you can understand what is discovery and what is artificial any questions up until this point any problems no problems until now it's going well okay very good thank you okay so we are talking about the sources about the roots but what about acting humanly so we go back to 1950s and to alan turing maybe you already watched the imitation game i strongly suggest you to watch the imitation game if you have time if you haven't watched it yet imitation game okay so it's a crypto war between the allies and axis i mean the english and the german cryptographers so uh, basically in the german side we have the enigma machine uh, which is for the communication between these uh, units the army units and then on the english side alan trick is trying to decrypt these messages and trying to find a way of decrypting these messages and what uh, alan trick uh, built is actually a computer okay so it, when we say Turing machine actually all the programming languages you write in any language like the Python Java C whatever it is are called as the Turing machine okay all the language all the programming uh, all the programs all the programs under any programming languages can be converted to the Turing machine because Turing machine is a way of abstracting the things from the physical world okay so until the Turing machine we were just trying to build some machines using the mechanics uh, like the uh, uh, like the uh, like the mechanical uh, uh, systems and so on 
or the electronical systems, hot wired systems, cable connected systems. Uh, but for, uh, after Turing, we have the softwares which can replicate, which can replace any machine or electronical device. Okay, so the Turing machine is a way of abstracting the things from the physical world, and then we can write the software as uh, an application, a software application with a programming language, a source code, and then this source code can be transformed to any machine. And Turing has also another contribution to the AI field. In the AI field, artificial intelligence field, Turing says that there might be a test, and in this test, there is a human interrogator or a judge or uh, let's say a moderator, and then asks questions to the, let's say there are two parties behind the wall and the interrogator cannot see these parties and we know that one of them is an AI system and another one is the human and they are answering these questions. If the interrogator can understand which one is human and which one is an AI system, then the AI system fails to uh, act like a human, okay, to trick or to fake like being a human. But if the interrogator cannot understand which one is human, which one is an AI system, then the AI system is successful to trick the human and to act like a human, okay? So this is one of the basic uh, questions behind uh, the uh, Turing test, acting like human. And also, uh, I think there was a um, movie called Ex Machina, right? Maybe you can watch this uh, movie. And in this movie, also an AI system is trying to live in the uh, human world uh, without acting like uh, with a acting like a human okay without any problems or maybe if you are familiar with westworld right westworld is an uh, experiment area for understanding how the human are acting and then trying to build some ai solutions to act like human okay Thinking humanly, we already covered something about it. The cognitive revolution in the 1960s in the psychology is trying to understand how the human is acting and how the human is thinking. So in here, we also try to understand a predicting and testing behavior of the human subjects. Okay, so this is called as a top-down approach. So we try to start with the actions and the behaviors of the human subjects. And in the second approach, we have the direct identification from neurological data. Okay, so we have lots of probes, sensors connected to the brain, and then we try to measure and collect the data from human body, and the, or maybe some actions like the words they pre, they pick, they prefer, or if there are some errors in the language, maybe we record them, and then we try to connect this data to the human predict uh, human behavior okay so the cognitive science or cognitive neuroscience or sometimes you hear like the neuropsychology or maybe you hear something like neuromarketing uh, so there are lots of different different applications of these studies in the field thinking rationally is something maybe you are familiar everything you write under the rules of mathematics can be considered as thinking rationally, okay? So if you are thinking in a mathematical way, if you put the, your thoughts, <coughs> your findings, your dreams in a mathematical formula, then this can be considered as thinking rationally. And it's coming back from the ancient Greek, and there are some rules of derivations, some rules of logic, and all these rules can be considered under thinking rationally. Acting rationally is the main focus of us under this class and we first define the rational behavior, okay? So for any problem, the definition of rational behavior is different, okay? For example, if you are trying to find an AI solution for chess playing, then obviously rational behavior is called as obeying the rules of the chess and then beating the opponent, 
okay so there are some rules of chess and rational behavior requires an ai solution to obey these rules and within these rules if there is a solution to the checkmate uh, the AI is responsible for finding this solution and apply it into the action. Okay, so this acting rationally can start with the rational behavior, and this rational behavior can change from problem to the problem. So the first thing we try to do under this course is finding a rational behavior definition for the problem. Okay, so under this class, you are going to have the final projects, you are going to have the term projects. And for these term projects, you are going to start with the problem definition. First, you will define your problem. And parallel to this problem definition, you are going to define your rational behavior. For this problem, what is rational? How an AI agent should behave in order to solve this problem? Okay. And then after we have this rational behavior definition, then we can find a solution and AI can just get programmed for finding this solution and then we can also measure the behavior of the ai okay without measurements the definition of these formulas are meaningless and in here in the first week maybe we can do a definition of the rational agents so the agents is the next chapter in the uh, in the textbook and probably we are going to cover it in the next week but for, from the first week, we can just define what is a rational agent. And by the definition, agent is a, just a function from perceptions to the actions. Okay, so P is going to indicate the perceptions. A is going to indicate the actions. And when we are talking about an agent, this agent is a definition from perception to the action. Okay, so for example, uh, let's think about a medical doctor AI solution okay so we have a medical doctor uh, we are trying to replace a medical doctor with the AI let's say and this AI solution is gonna make some diagnostics from the voice of a person let's say so the AI, uh, AI software is gonna listen to the uh, patients and then try to understand if there are some defects in the voice and then let's say put some uh, diagnostics and then after all it's gonna have some idea about the uh, possible problems okay so this type of uh, agent is reading the perceptions like the voice of a person and then taking some actions okay so giving some reports let's say or maybe making a treatment okay so solving the problem okay or maybe suggesting some drugs some uh, medicines let's say okay so all these things are called as the agents from perception perceptions to the actions okay so this is the basic definition of agent but on the next week we are going to cover it in more detail and to finally in the menu we have the uh, ai history brief history let's say because you know ai is one of the most trending topics for now and you know it's exponentially increasing the studies are increasing the number of people studying in the ai field are increasing so every day we are adding new stories to this history but let's say from a perspective we have the philosophical mathematical economics you know we have connection to all the disciplines under the science okay so for example in linguistics we are talking about some unstructured text or let's say talkings converted to the uh, AI solutions or from the control theory maybe you are trying to optimize or design a system uh, to solve the problem uh, with using some constraints okay so these things are called uh, these things all these uh, disciplines not limited by them are connected to the AI somehow and from the history we can say that uh, in 1943, maybe we are talking about some circuit model of brain. Can we model it in a mathematical way of modeling? We are talking about a Boolean modeling uh, of the brain. And then in 1950, we, are, we already covered the Turing's approach to the machines, the computers, or the artificial intelligence. In 1956, it's the first time AI is announced. So artificial intelligence is formally first time uh, written in the Dartmouth meeting. 
In 1952-69, we, we were talking about there were uh, maybe we are talking about the winter time of the AI. Uh, it was very difficult times for AI studies, and there were not not big uh, progr progress in the AI studies. For example, in 1950s, we have first AI programs like the checker playing logic theorists or geometry engines or some problem solutions but you know accessing to the computers was also limited so uh, there were only a few people studying on the computers uh, so obviously the ai studies have some difficulties in 1965 there were some logical reasoning algorithms by robinson and 1966 to 73, there were some computational problems in AI because the hardware was uh, hardware hardware was limited, and you know we need to optimize it for the best performance. So again, we have some difficulties about the hardware. In 19 until the 1979, maybe we can talk about the first knowledge base systems where you can program your rules, your knowledge, you add them to the knowledge base. We will talk about what's the knowledge base later on, but you were just simply putting some rules into your knowledge base and these rules are executed in the given order. Like the firewalls, maybe in the firewall you have some rules about the blocks, some permissions and so on, and these rules are executed one by one. In the 80s, AI starts to become an industry. Um, most, um, I mean, the main industry about the AI was about the statistics or some studies about the chatbots and so on, but they were very, very primitive. And most of the time, uh, these things are uh, connected to the uh, academic studies. In 1986, uh, the neural networks first time announced and it's getting popularity in the uh, in the uh, academic studies because it was just an imitation of the human brain by using the neurons and the synapses but you know uh, the neural network was developed i mean we get much more popular uh, very later on in the 19 i mean 2010s or maybe even the late 2010s uh, let's say starting from the 2015 and so on with the deep learning, of course. Deep learning was very famous in the uh, universities, in the academic studies, let's say after the 2000s, with the big data and the access of better hardwares. But uh, the industrial or the popular applications comes much later on. In 1987, maybe we can talk about AI becomes a science, and we put these classes under the computer science course uh, uh, curriculum. And now we can talk about AI is a science, scientific discipline and then we, can, we have our formal approaches, we have our roots in the science, state of art applications and a methodology. Most of the time, mo uh, one of the most important things is the methodology. In 1997, uh, 1995, we can talk about the uh, intelligent agents. So uh, parallel to the industrial developments uh, with the softwares, we have the intelligent agents applied to the solutions to the problems. And maybe we can talk about uh, some developments in the late 1990s, like the Deep Blue is the first, uh, is the first computer software which can beat a uh, world champion chess, the world chess champion. Uh, Gary Kasparov in 1997. Maybe you can just find the picture from these days uh, in the internet. Uh, okay, the, I mean, um, the, the uh, success of AI is increasing day by day, so it's not important to prove them. I mean, show you how the AI is useful and helpful to apply in the daily applications. But under this course, mainly, maybe we can discuss about the uh, daily usage of the AI because you know AI as a science or as an industry for the centralized technologies for the capital intensive technologies is much easier to understand but maybe we can talk about the perspectives of uh, daily usage the casual usage of the AI uh, for us for everybody or peer-to-peer -peer usage um, actually the the way I follow in my studies is following the responsible AI path. I mean, uh, we are developing the artificial intelligence solutions which are responsible from their decisions. So maybe on the next classes we can talk about these key terms uh, about 
let me put something like okay uh, let's say novel approaches for these days maybe we can talk about responsible ai so under the responsible ai we have x ai explainable ai okay so if you have a decision let's say if you tr if you give an order to a car to turn right then you need to explain why to turn right and why not to turn left so this is the part of explainable ai or adaptable ai okay so ai is adapting itself to the environment to the uh, to the parameters from the environment okay adaptable ai interactive ai Okay, so we are talking about an AI that we can interact and uh, try to understand the decisions. Transparency and of course the automated machine learning, AutoML. So automated machine learning, why? Because if you want an AI to take the responsibility then there should be no human intervention. Okay. So all the decisions should be taken by the AI so then you can make the AI responsible from these things, okay? So, so some, these are some new concepts under the AI that I'm also following this, uh, this, uh, this uh, philosophy. And also another uh, social uh, point of view is the democratization of AI, okay? So, I personally also follow on this perspective the democratization of AI which means AI for everybody not for some very rich companies only not for some academic studies only AI for everybody so how can we make AI available accessible and useful for everybody so these are the questions I'm going after in order to democratize the AI okay so so far so good i think we have covered many things uh, in the first week but one more time do you have any questions anything to say about any topics we have covered today any problems uh, excuse me 